Hello, I'm Stefan Kreber, project leader for Lexity, and today we're going to be going through something that is quite exciting. Uh, in fact, it's a feature that must have been requested uh, ever since the, the beginning of the Lexity project, pretty much, and that a number of uh, open source uh, options uh, were, were developed to, to cater for uh, over the years already. So um, I'm talking about a web interface for Lexity. And as mentioned, there are existing options for that. Uh, the most common one would be Mosaic LXC. Uh, but pretty much all of the existing options require the use of a third party container or VM or something to run the actual web server, potentially a database, uh, some authentication components to interact with Lexity through a web interface. What we've been working on on our side uh, through a new team uh, that's just dedicated to work on that is a first party web interface that is shipped directly with LexD, provided by LexD, uses LexD's own authentication, LexD's own storage for everything. And yeah, it's actually been available in the Edge channel for a little while. I think some people have, have kind of accidentally noticed that it exists. Um, and I'm going to give you a tour to, of what that looks like today. This is still very much work in progress. Uh, that's the reason why it's not in a stable channel or anything. It's only in Edge right now. And uh, as part of that, I need to remind everyone that the Edge channel is uh, probably not something that you want to be running on any kind of production system or anything. So that's why here I'm using a clean uh, Lexd VM that I need to actually install SnapD in, just so I can install the Snap. And yeah, I'm not going to be running that directly on production servers or anything. Um, so that's installing LexD from Edge, which will come with the UI built in. And then I'm going to go through LexD init and just see um, how to set things up so you can use it from your web browser. All right, almost done. And here we go. So I uh, just need to reconnect to get the right path. There we go. And next in it. There we go. No, we're not going to be doing any clustering or anything weird. Just create a basic storage pool of normal size, create a default network, normal setup too. Uh, the main question we could answer a different value to is this one, which is uh, making it available on the network. We obviously need that for our web browser to connect. So we'll say yes to that one, and then you're done. If you need to do it on an existing LexD, just make sure core HTTPS address is set to a value that makes sense in your environment, and then you'll be able to connect to it. Now, if I switch over to a web browser, um, let me just okay, found the right window here. There we go. Um, uh, yeah, and I needed to grab the IP address. Okay, so now in your web browser, you can go to HTTPS, 127.217.250.10 in this case, and the port. Uh, if you've configured something like Let's Encrypt your own certificate, you can make that be a valid certificate. In this case, I'm just using a default self-sign, so I need to skip that warning. Then you get onto the welcome page of the LXD UI, which asks you to set up authentication. So for that, we need to create a certificate that's done in browser through JavaScript here. And then you need to download two files, a CRT and a PFX. The PFX file you need to load in your web browser. There are instructions uh, for the different web browsers here. So you just go to the settings, hit import. Then you need to go and pick your file. You can see that part when picking the PFX file. Then it asks for the password. There are no passwords, so just hit OK. And you'll see it's added as trust, as uh, to the trust store. It shows that there's untrusted, so there's no uh, link back to a normal CA or anything, but it, the certificate is there. And then if when you go back to your first tab, it asks where you want to use the new certificate. So just say OK. And at that point, we're done on the web browser side. Now on the VM side, because I'm using a VM for that demo, I need to go back here and then I need to transfer the file from my downloads folder. So that's the CRT and download and transfer that to slash root in there and then add it to the trust store like so. Once that's done, 
you can see it in the Lexi Trust Store as, as trusted. And we can then go back to our web UI. It will detect that the certificate is not trusted and automatically go to the instances view. Here we can, so first of all, we can just go around. There's a default profile, no big surprises. That's what we expect. At this point, we can see it's got um, storage and network configured. On the network side, we can see what Lexi init created as well. And same thing on the storage tab. So that shows you what you normally get to do with a LXE storage list, network list, profile show in the CLI. Now in the instances view, we can go and create an instance. We'll just do, let's call it U1. And then we're going to pick Ubuntu Jammy. Uh, container, default profiles and everything is good. Um, actually, let's not configure anything special at this point. Just create. And that's going to go and download the image for us and create that instance going to be showing up in that list as soon as it's created. Now, in the background, let's do something a bit more exciting and create a new instance called v1. And for this one, I'm going to pick a desktop image. So that's a virtual machine. So Jammy desktop VM. There we go. And this one, I'm going to configure a bit. So I can do configurations and go, say, resource limits. I'm going to be bumping this total number of CPU to 4. We just got a notification that the container is now running. And then bump the memory as well to four gigs. And let's go and create that. While that's happening, let's go look at our container. So we can see it shows what it's running. Uh, it is a container, it shows the IPv4, IPv6 addresses. It shows uh, when it was created, when it was last used, current memory usage of it, current disk usage of it, and uh, networks and profiles that, are, that it's using. We've got the same configuration view as I just showed with the VM uh, present here for any kind of live config changes you want to do. Then the snapshots view lets you easily create a snapshot. So let's do, say, snap zero, create. There we go. Snapshot is created. The terminal gets you a live shell inside of the instance. You can directly go play with it. Console shows you your boot console and login prompt. If I hit enter, there we go, login prompt. The logs page lets you see the low level LXE configuration that way, as well as the LXE log. Now, if we go look at the terminal again, uh, we can see that we've got no limits on the number of CPUs uh, or memory right now. But just to show that this works as expected, we can actually go and change that. So we can do edit instance, exposed CPU, let's do two. And memory, let's do fixed and do, I don't know, 256 megs of RAM. Okay, save. Go back to the terminal. And the memory has shrunk, and the CPUs will also have similarly shrunk. It's not the most visual thing. Uh, but yeah, we're down to two CPUs now. So, uh, going back to the instances list. Now we can see that our VM is also there and must be starting up at a time. Um, it's using quite a bit more memory. We can see 1.3 gigs of the 4 gigs that are allocated. Disk space using 2.6 gigs. Um, configuration, we could go and change stuff that there are less things that you can change live on a VM. Snapshots will work the exact same way. So we can just go ahead and create a snapshot. There we go. Terminal, that gets you the terminal if a LXD agent is running which it does. And again, if you go look at the logs, we have kind of QMU logs and stuff there. Now, where things get interesting is the console, because this is a desktop. So there you go. You've got a desktop environment. And you can you could even go and hit full screen. Um, so I would not recommend, don't want to do that now, given how I, I share my screen. Um, but yeah, you get it detected the size of the, um, the terminal uh, of the window in the web browser and updated that to be the screen size in the VM. And you can go and effectively use that as any old system. Uh, so if we go get the terminal in there, it's all working fine. Um, yeah, even the shortcuts work fine. So I can go. Uh, say to the settings app here and tweak things whichever way I want. There we go. 
So that's most of what's functional right now. The instances view and tweaking instances and read-only view effectively of uh, networks and storage. Um, you can also do some tweaks on the project itself. So the entire section here relates to the default project. If you had more than one project, you could go in and tweak things there. Um, the cluster view doesn't really work because I'm not clustered. The warnings functions properly. You get to see the list of warnings from LexD. Settings are the global settings for LexD. So we should be able to see here in bold that core HTTPS address is set and we can see the value. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so that's what we've got today. There's quite a lot more that's coming as far as kind of focus areas and, and things we want to, to grow and add to the, to the UI. The main focus for us lately has been micro clouds. So we're going to be focusing on getting the LexD UI to work well with micro clouds, which means getting a cluster targeting some of those features in place in there, um, but also expanding uh, some of what's possible with the existing, existing entries, so like having more options in instances and that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want to go look at the project itself, it's on GitHub. It's on the, the canonical organization as LexD UI. And that's where all of the code is present. That's where you can file um, issues against the um, against that particular project. If you find any issue in the web interface or something that you feel should be tweaked, uh, you can send pull requests as well for improvements there. And effectively, anything that's merged in there usually shows up within 24 hours within the edge snap of LexD. And once um, they're confident that they have something stable enough and good for a release, they'll start making tags. And once we have those, uh, we will be starting to ship those as part of the uh, stable snap of LexD. Until then, you need to use Edge, uh, but that's the state of the LexD UI. I'm very excited about a lot of the developments that are coming up around that. And yeah, excited for people to start using it and play with it. So if you've got any questions around it, you can leave them down below in the video description, uh, in the video comment section, or you can go on the community forum and ask there. We'll make sure that the UI team um, is um, paying attention to, to both, uh, should you have anything. I think for bugs, uh, it's like issues or improvements, it's probably best to go on GitHub and file uh, things against the like, UI project directly. Just makes it easier to track, to keep track of everything. But for questions, um, the comment section and the forum are probably the best the best option. All right, well, I hope this was very interesting to you. Um, again, if you want to play with this, I strongly recommend you run it inside of a VM or on some spare system you have. Don't run the Edge channel in production. That's a very bad idea. But play with it. Let us know what you think. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.